What was King Charles III saying to Raila Odinga? That has been the burning question on the minds of very many as Azimio supporters. And today, I am going to tackle that Kenya Shillings 1 million question. But even before we go there, there is a lot of misunderstanding. There is a lot of confusion about the role of the king in England. Because we know that there is a government headed by a prime minister. So my suggestion is that we clear the air about that. And then it will be much easier for us to understand what the king may have said to Raila Odinga. And even more importantly, what this visit, the ongoing visit, by the British monarch means to the country called Kenya. Indeed, a former colony of the monarchy. Now, today I don't really want to go into the spiritual for many reasons. Although if you stay with me until the end, you'll easily be able to read between the lines or listen between the lines and get a lot of information tons of information for those of us who are spiritual. But I'm sure those of us who are alert have already noticed that those who are spiritual are telling us it is not a good sign. That there's something wrong in the spiritual realm. But for today, allow me to stick to the politics. Now for starters, the British monarchy and the country called Kenya or Kenya as most people in that part of the world like to call us, go a long way back, a very long way back. For instance, treetops in Nyeri became very famous because King Charles III's mother ascended to the throne while on Kenyan soil and she was precisely at treetops, Nyeri, on the night of 5th, 6th February. 1952 when her father King George passed on and she ascended to the throne. She was on Kenyan soil. Now 1952 was a very fascinating year for Kenya because most of us will know that in the same year, later that year, in October, the state of emergency was declared at the height of the Mau Mau Rebellion. Same year Queen Elizabeth ascended to the throne. Now the long history also suggests something else. That British commercial interests in Kenya hey, are serious. British investments in Kenya are very serious. Okay, Which means that Kenya is a very important country to Britain. Now I can hear somebody shooting back and telling me, Kumekucha, get out of here. We all know that the King of England has no interest, has no say in politics. So what are you talking about? Well, I heard you. And I'm going to tell you something that you may not know. The King of England actually has veto power over anything passed by parliament. In fact, both houses. Anything passed by both houses, the king has power to veto it. And that will be the end of that bill. Did you know that? And so I hope that that single fact, okay, puts an end to that argument about the monarchy and politics. Because you see, the way Britain does her things is Chinia Maji. That is something which is very important to understand. And by the way, all this is very relevant to the question we started with. What was the king saying to Raila Molodinga? It is also worth noting that this veto power by the monarchy has not been used for centuries. Yeah? Actually, it was last used by Queen Anne. When in 1708, 11th March 1708, <laughs> she vetoed the Scottish Militia Bill. 
which was supposed to authorize the arming hmm, kupewa mabunduki na kadhalika of the Scottish and the reason why Queen Anne vetoed it at the time is because her ministers, her cabinet advised her against signing that bill into law. Why? Because it was feared that the loyalty of the Scottish to the Queen at that time was not guaranteed. Now there's something else relevant. The king usually has a weekly meeting every Tuesday with the Prime Minister and I don't think they meet to discuss the terrible English weather. <laughs> no way! But of course they have a lot to discuss. Why? Because the king also gets intelligence briefings regularly. They come in the famous red leather box together with papers that the king has to sign as head of state. Experts have of course argued for a very long time that this is very useful for any sitting prime minister to be able to discuss or even use the king as a sounding board, somebody with so much experience because prime ministers come and go and a king or queen is there for decades and therefore the prime minister is able to discuss very sensitive intelligence information with somebody who has authority and access to that information and somebody who everybody is sure will never reveal state secrets because every country in the world has state secrets in case you didn't know now of course based on all that information you'll immediately know that obviously the king would be very concerned very interested in the political situation in Kenya now don't get me wrong they will never make a speech about it they will never speak about it but they'll be concerned about it chini yamaji and that is why the visible body language as his majesty king charles the third said a few things to raila yeah, has to be most interesting and you know it is super fascinating that the british intelligence have never supported a man called Raila Odinga for the presidency of Kenya. And it has a lot to do with what happened in the 50s and 60s in Kenya. Because you see Raila's dad, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, was being supported by the Russians, being financed by the Russians. Indeed, that is why the hospital in Kisumu is called Russia. Yeah, it was built financed fully by funds from Russia. Now I know a lot of Kenyans don't know this but in the 70s and 80s if you wanted to get into very serious problems with the government, with the Kenyan government all you had to do was to be seen in the vicinity visiting the Russian embassy in Nairobi. <laughs> It was very serious to have anything to do with the Russians. And of course we know that at that time, Kenya had very close cordial relationship with the United Kingdom. Indeed, Britain was assisting us in very many areas of growing the then young Kenyan nation, including security, intelligence services, etc, etc. I'm sure you get my drift. And so the intelligence community in the UK have never been excited about a Raila Odinga presidency. And that is not a secret. You know, at one point, this discussion between the king and Raila to me, it looked like if King Charles were Kenyan, he would be saying something like, Where Raila? To Lisa Bolly. <laughs> I mean, just look at the body language and come to your own conclusion. But in my opinion, based on what is happening in our motherland right now, the opinion, the influence 
of other powers outside Kenya may not have the same impact it has had in previous years because punda imechoka tena imechoka sana now very quickly before i go i have decided to extend our offer on ile kitabu ya zakayo yeah in case you've not yet had the chance to take in my latest sizzler the root of kenyans will never know there is a unique opportunity over the next 24 hours to do so if you feel that you need this very important content and your budget doesn't quite cut it to enable you to get your hands on it for the next 24 hours you can name your price lakini usinifinye sana and for that reason the limit will be 50 yeah the first 50 to send me an email on that email address you see on your screens right now you miss this at gmail.com naming your price and then guess what i will also throw in another valuable kumekucha book you can choose for yourself or you can allow me to choose for you the most liked of my other ebooks of course is dark secrets of the kenyan presidency how mtula kilozo senior was murdered yeah and then there's another one called the president's lovers now that kalastron one of you took it in recently and they were delighted very excited about it and yes it talks about a kenyan president and so you have this very exciting opportunity please take full advantage of it yeah as we wait for the month of november and the big political surprises that month will come with because many analysts believe this is the calm before the storm including yours truly of course i also believe the same until next time this is chris kumekucha